in the life of me. I cannot remember of uh, an incident here, an event that uh, would indicate that I have traces of uh, being uh, 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 dictatorial. Uh, I've always been a, a good boy, a, a holy man. Off by so many cons when you oh, you should not put people to death. For his brutal crackdown on drugs, Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte was criticized by the UN, the EU, and human rights organizations. <laughs> Badly thought out, ill-conceived drug policies foster a regime of impunity, infecting the whole justice sector. So I call the president, uh, if you want to be a good trading partner to the European Union, make sure you're going to change that. So what's the f problem? If I look like a bad boy to them, I really don't give a sh Who are they to me? They're nothing. I am not a statesman. I do not aspire to be one. I just would like to be an ordinary president who can f the you if you will you f with my with you. He'd already proven he was tough on drugs. Now he upped the fight against the media and human rights advocates. But human rights cannot be used as a shell or an excuse to destroy the country. 2018, the president launched a bloody war on Negros Island. Officially, it was against armed communists. But in reality, the targets were very different. More than 80 farm workers, lawyers, human rights advocates, and other citizens were murdered in extrajudicial killings. Yesha Ramos's husband, Ben, was a lawyer who represented poor farmers. He was shot dead, and Yesha blames President Duterte's government. It was the state forces taking the life of a person who is very innocent, who has been very supported by farmers, is, is, is not an answer. Negros is a resource-rich island where a few politically connected families own vast plantations. Zara Alvarez was accused of being a communist rebel for her efforts helping farm workers stand up to landowners. In the recent killings, it is very clear that it's the police who killed those victims. As a member of the local human rights group, she documented the mounting deaths from government counterinsurgency operations. We still investigate the cases of human rights violations because we believe that the persons in authority won't do it. A year after her interview with 101 East, Zara was shot dead by unidentified gunmen. She was the 13th member of her organization to be killed during Duterte's presidency. The media has also been a target. In 2020, ABS-CBN, the country's largest broadcaster, was forced to shut down when the government rejected the renewal of their license. Critics said such events were part of Duterte's war on dissent. Nobel Peace Prize winner and investigative journalist Maria Reza was another target facing arrests and imprisonment. If we can't hold power to account, we can't do anything. The Philippine government filed 10 arrest warrants against me. Citizens, you have been warned. Your civil liberties have been eroded. Our democracy is shrinking fast. Rodrigo Roa Duterte finishes his reign with strong approval ratings, his combative style popular among the public. But for critics at home and abroad, his record will forever be tainted.
How would you like to be remembered as president? What would be your legacy? Rodrigo Duterte, he tried his best.